on here guys and today we're talking about the Emax Tiny Hawk Race 2. <laughs> This is Emacs's latest release, and I have to say, first off, this is the best out-of-the-box tuned quad I have flown of any size at any time. Uh, it is so incredibly smooth, it is so locked in, it flies like you're just communicating telepathically and it's just following everything uh, that you want it to do uh, I remember you know back in the day when I used to drive a lot of B series Hondas my Civic Si Integra GSR the transmissions they had on those little you know cars were so good it was like it was you were just it was doing whatever your mind willed it to do. And that's what this feels like when you fly it. This is a small, very small um, quadcopter that is similar to the Tiny Hawk 2. It actually has a slightly smaller overall footprint because of there's no ducts on this model, uh, but they have gone up a size in motors and up a size in props. This is spinning two inch props instead of these. I think these are closer to like 40 millimeters. So here we are on the bench with the Tiny Hawk Race 2. Now this thing comes shipped with the same Emacs hard case that we have all come accustomed to. And inside you will find your little Emacs tool set with a little tiny screw, a little balance plug to allow you to fly 1S if you want, lots of extra little screws. It comes with one set of these Avan props. And of course, your requisite Emacs stickers. In addition to that, it comes with this very nice six port 1S charger to allow you to charge six of these at a time. And it actually comes with two of these little 450 milliamp packs. Uh, so a couple of notable things that are different between this and the Tiny Hawk 2. Um, one are that this, well, let's go over the similarities first. The similarities are, I'm pretty sure this is using the same exact, uh, flight controller stack in there, uh, and EAC stack. It's using a very similar, uh, dual one S port connector. This one, they've done a really cool job of putting those together. This one is only one S but it also has a little thing that will allow you to run a 2S battery, plugging it into here by itself. This one does differently by having two of the 1S, but essentially it's the same power combinations. The little Rocketeer pod on both is the same. They both are using the Runcam Nano 2. They are both using this new separate video transmitter in here that Emacs has put in there that allows you to go up to 200 milliwatts. That is great. They both have um, sort of this little upgraded receiver antenna, but they are both using the onboard sort of SPI receiver. Um, one thing is they both also have the, this one is using the motors into the plugs. This one has it direct soldered on here. You also get a pretty good increase in the size of the motors on this model. This model uses 1103 size motors and they are 7,500 KV on 2S. That is kind of right in the middle of where you want to be. I personally like a little bit higher KV on my 2S. Um, and if you notice they're using different props, this is a tiny two inch version of the Avan prop. It is not the two and a half inch that you might find on the Tiny Hawk Freestyle. Um, so it's actually a little bit bigger than the Tiny Hawk prop, but it's still a lot smaller than two and a half inch. So if you compare, like we said we were going to do to the Diatone Cube, you can see how similar they are size-wise. 
pretty similar indeed. They're both using the same camera. They both have 200 milliwatt BTXs. This one though I've installed an FR Sky XM receiver. So you have a lot more range than this SPI one that is on board. Of course, this weighs 49 grams. This weighs 44 point something grams. So you have about a four gram difference. This combination of two batteries by themselves weigh 26 grams. This 452S battery that I would run on the Diatone Cube weighs 29 grams, so three gram difference. So total all up weight of this versus this, this versus this, just the two quads, four grams of difference. This entire package versus this entire package, total of seven grams difference. So does that really make a difference for a small package if you were to hit something seven grams? It's really close guys. And you can actually fly at 400 or 300 or 350 with this and really get the weights even closer. Now normally, like I said, I would not have compared these two together, but Ferrari was the one that said he thought this was faster than this. So I don't know guys, I don't know. Let's check out the frame. The frame is a very interesting design. It's very thin, but uh, it's still actually very, very rigid for how thin it is. They've done a really good job in this frame. Emacs always pretty much does. Um, the only thing I really wish is that it was just bigger. I don't think you could fit a two and a half inch prop. There's just not a lot of clearance right there. And this setup, this component list really begs for a two and a half inch prop. It needs it. Um, you really just developed an entire system that could handle um, more power, more prop. If they just extended these arms just a few extra millimeters, they could have fit it on here and they've already got you the power system, they've already got you the motors, they've already got you the battery uh, voltage that is all going to be able to support a larger prop, but they put it on the smaller prop package. Now, if this weighed 35 grams instead of almost 45 grams, I could see that being a significant enough reduction in weight to warrant um, a little bit less power, but it's not. It's not, it's so close in weight to this. So what does this package end up? Well, Emacs has been doing some very innovative things lately and some curious things. Emacs is never one to follow. They're always one to blaze their own trail. Sometimes that works out incredibly well, like their Baby Hawk series that's been famous for so long, and the Tiny Hawk series. Um, but sometimes they kind of land in this middle ground. They're sort of like this weird middle child where they play with sizes that other people aren't um, to try to uh, spark some interest. And I think this one misses the mark just a little bit. Uh, it's sort of similar in regard to the Baby Hawk R4 inch. That was just such a fun, fun thing to fly. But it's like, who is it for? Um, it's not quite fast enough to take it on a full size five inch track. I mean, you actually could, but you're not going to win. It's not light enough to really fly from your driveway. And this sort of falls into that same category. It's far too fast to fly in your house, but when you compare it to the Diatone Cube, which is only four grams heavier, um, it's considerably slower than that. Now, the reason I compare that to that is because Ferrati, who works a lot with Emacs on his channel, said he compared them back to back. He flies both back to back. He flies both a lot. And he said that he thought that the Tiny Hog Race 2 was faster. And in my mind, when I saw that, uh, I was like, this can't be right. I have to get one of these to see if this is true. Now, I totally have a ton of respect for Variety. I've watched his channel 
long before I had a channel of my own. But on my channel, I did too tend to fly a lot of these micro size. Last year, I did a top five toothpicks and the Diatone Cube was right at the top. So I really had to, after having all of these dozens and dozens of hours flying these class quads, no. And the reason why immediately stood out to me is there's no way it can be faster was because this is only flying two inch props. And knowing going from a two inch prop to a two and a half inch prop, what that does. Uh, back when we started, back when we started playing with two and a half inch props on the Catalyst Machine Works, the little droner, right? That thing was so fast, but it was 95 grams. And you would fly it on for us, it would be incredible. But it was really too fast to fly comfortably from your driveway. You wouldn't want to smack into a window or something like that. But when the toothpick class arrived, and for around 50-ish grams, you could get incredible performance on Biblade 2.5 inch props. You could bring that weight down to a comfortable level to be able to fly from your driveway. And this one does that. In fact, I would almost say that it does it better. So don't make any mistake, I'm not saying that the Diatone Cube is objectively better. I'm just saying it's not faster. There's no way that it's faster. This, I would have to say, is about the same top speed if I had to guess. We need to get some radar guns on these things uh, to the original Baby Hawk, uh, which is quite an achievement because the Baby Hawk, you know, had a little bit larger motors. I want to say those were 1104s and it was a little bit heavier. This, I would say, so that puts it about 38 to 42 miles an hour, high 30s, low 40s. If I had to guess, the Diatone Cube 229 on 2S is capable of 50, 55 miles an hour. It does seem a good bit faster. But here's why I think Ferrati was getting that false uh, comparison of speed. He was flying both of those in his backyard and only in his backyard. So you're very limited. He was, he was basically doing it in about a 20 foot by 30 foot space or somewhere around there and in through obstacles. So in that environment, this actually does perform better. The tune is no question better. And the maneuverability that this thing has is better. Um, but there's like, how, how closed in do you really have to get in order to really take advantage of that? I don't think if I was on a small track that there's any way I would win with this thing unless it was like almost small enough to be inside, really. Uh, and it's just that that um, that lack of speed. But what it does have is, if I had to guess like zero to like 25 miles an hour, or maybe even zero to 30 miles an hour, this thing probably will appear faster because it has a little bit more grip because of the extra prop and the design of these Emax Avan blades are so high pitched that you get that instant grip, that instant pull. And it's absolutely gonna have that initial um, zoom that may be a little faster. And I think that's what Ferrari may have been feeling. Uh, but the top speed, if you take it out to a larger area and you actually get both up to top speed, full throttle, it's very apparent this is much slower. So who is this for? Um, it's, I'd be very comfortable flying either one of those things around people. I don't know if it's really fair to compare them, but since he did, and I really wanted to comment on some of his notes, uh, I really felt compelled to. Um, otherwise, I probably would never have even thought to mention these in the same breath. I don't really consider this a toothpick class. To me, toothpick class, there's really no solid definition, but I've always considered it, uh, you know, 65 millimeter props. 60, and this is not 65 millimeter props. It's two inch, but is there still a place for two inch? Well, it flies great. The tune's spectacular, uh, but let's talk about a couple of other things. This, you can chop this off and put an XT30, or you can use it as is and use two of those 450. So it comes with two of them, but since you have to run both of them, it really is like you only get one pack with this, which is fine because like the cube comes with zero packs. So I'm not gonna fault it for that. Um, but by the time you buy two of those 450s, you know, you're talking about 10, 12 bucks. Whereas a 452S tattoo, like I'm gonna show, like I showed, that's like six bucks right now on sale at Race Day Quads. There's a link in the description below. 
So which we which we go with, you know, like uh, there is a couple of moves that I was able to achieve with this thing that I don't think a couple of really tight maneuvers that I don't necessarily think I could have done with the cube. Um, but there's very few of those. And in most respects, I really would have rather have the extra speed and the extra power. And then another big negative of this thing is it does have the power needed though to do some really excellent freestyle moves. Power loops, you know, split S's, all kinds of power moves are pretty much uh, capable with this thing. But because of this built-in SBI receiver, the range is really not that great. By the time I got two houses away, I was already getting that, you know, radio warning, telemetry, whatever. Um, warning on here so it's like it has the power and it doesn't have maybe the speed of the cube but it does have some decent speed it still can go about 40 miles an hour um, but and that'll get you to the limits of range on this thing so quick that I really wish they had just put on they have this really tiny d8 receiver that they use in the baby hawk r4 inch I wish they would have put that on here um, but here's the thing though because this only has an SPI receiver, my Diatone Cube, I'm using the FR Sky XM. So now if you compare those two receivers, that four grams of difference really goes down to about two and a half or three grams only. And so it's even closer on which one do you want to go with um, if you only had to pick one. So I think a lot of people will enjoy this. Um, it's probably going to be a little easier for the beginner. I think both of them handled crashes and turtle moding just totally fine. Uh, I don't know why. Yeah, I mean, actually, I'd say that these are, as far as durability, are probably equal. The Emax does have a little bit better motor protection. The Cube has basically no motor protection. Uh, but yeah, guys, Emax, here's the thing. For indoors, like the Tiny Hawk 2 SPI receiver, go ahead, good all day. But for these outdoor models, go ahead and just put the D8 thing on. People are going to want to go farther than 50 yards. Um, and then, you know, I mean, Beta FPV is selling bind and flies with crossfire on there already. You know, whoop class, um, smaller than this. So at least make it an option, I would say. Um, the canopy design is outstanding. This molded, injection molded plastic that they use is light it's durable it's quite handsome um, so in the looks department this thing is definitely a 10 out of 10 overall if I had to choose to fly this versus the diatome I'm probably gonna pick the diatome but here's one extra special reason why you may want to fly this instead especially if you're flying from your driveway it doesn't have the speed of the diatome it doesn't have the power of the diatome now you know, let's be clear, the Diatone Cube version I have is the 10,000 KV. So I'm wondering if Ferrari has the lower KV. Uh, maybe that brings the speeds a little bit closer, but I have the 10,000 KV, so. But here's one advantage it does have, especially for in your driveway right now, since we're not supposed to go anywhere, right guys? This thing is much, and I mean much quieter than the Diatone Cube. Full throttle, I would say people will only even notice me flying this if they're one or two houses away. Full throttle on the Diatone Cube, I think people could probably hear me down the block. Um, so if flying from your backyard or flying from your front yard and not irritating your neighbors is of paramount importance, now don't make no mistake, like the Cube is still not as loud as a five inch or even a three inch by any means, but it is significantly louder than this. This two inch combination, for some reason, even though the weights are really not that different, is exceptionally quiet. And that is something that is important to a lot of people, especially if they're gonna be flying it from their yard, especially if everybody's on edge, especially if you have neighbors with dogs and you don't wanna piss them off and have them bark for the next you know, 15 hours in a row. That could be enough reason right there to go with this thing. So what do you think in the comments, guys? Which micro class are you going to go with for the 2020 season? Or are you just going to be like me and have them all? Um, really good job on this Emax. I really wish you would come out with a version that has like an extra three or four mils on each corner so you can run two and a half inch props. I really think that would be something special. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.